the recording. And speaking of this week, I there's there's a saying we used to have up in Chicago when I traded up there, which was you know a bad week. He'd so always say, he'd sometimes say, you know what? I've been stopped more this week than than rush hour traffic in Chicago than rush hour traffic you know rush hour traffic in Chicago. You're constantly stopping. I've been stopped out quite a bit this week, but there's one trade that I've put on today, and um, I do like it, and I'll kind of explain it to you. And you know, if I have to suffer another stop on it, uh, I'll be. I, I can assure you that I'll be done for the week. <laughs> Uh, because that will certainly put me at kind of a, a max drawdown for the week that I generally like to have. You know, I don't like to have, you know, too huge of drawdowns during the week, but generally you put it at about, you know, I generally don't like to, my max drawdown during a day is, you know, if I hit 5%, I'm generally out of the market. For a week, if I hit 10% of drawdown in a week, you know, I'm usually done for the week. And I'm, if I were to get stopped out here, I think that I'd be right very close to that. I got this trade in on the pound dollar though. Um, this is one that I, I really, I'm really bearish on this pound right now uh, for obvious reasons. If you've been following the pound, I'm setting. I set up an order here for four one three one four three one three one. I set up an order. I was going to take this last night. Let me go ahead and put the pound up in here real quick. It's already been to a negative five here, and certainly, it, you know, the the sellers are all over the place when it comes to the pound. And I think, out of all of them, with the movements that we've had, we've had a, we have we've had a, you know, I think this is one of them that has a shot at, at perhaps reaching, you know, a max profit level here today. I was actually, you know. I, with all the debacle yesterday with internet, I actually really wanted to sell it up in here when it closed, when it went back down, down below 4,500. Um, but I kind of, I kind of uh, cooled myself down a little bit from this. And, you know, my, my plan this morning was if I saw the pound make a close beneath the 4,400 level, I wanted to go ahead and take it. And it didn't make a slight close. Uh, I don't think it, and maybe no, it didn't. Four four zero one two. It almost did this morning. I guess I didn't see that closing price right. Um, but I didn't want to place any sell trades on the pound uh, as we headed into retail sales this morning. Uh, big news announcements coming out of the U.S. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to news. But this is this is where my stopping point will be today. This one's either going to hit profit or I'm going to be done. Uh, my sell entry is essentially at the market. On a dollar strength position, and I got basically a stop limit of, of 50 pips. Just a one to one risk reward. I was a little shocked at this little move right down in here. Now, there was there was a big news day coming out of uh, the pound yesterday, and I didn't get to explain it very well to students yesterday because we kept on getting the servers timeout on Adobe. But you know, you see this big candle right in through here. Uh, this was the pound yesterday. The news that came out on the pound yesterday. And here, let me pull it up for you. Oil is actually down, and today is actually March thirteenth. Happy Friday the thirteenth, everybody. It's a full moon and Friday the 13th. <laughs> um, Bank of England had their interest rate announcement, and they also had their inflation report, and they also had some commentary from uh, um, from Mr. Carney, the head of the Bank of England. Very dovish as far as the Bank of England goes. They left interest rates unchanged, but you had to be a little concerned or bearish on the pound just based on the language concerning the Brexit scenarios. Um, one of the things that uh, that really bounced out to me is when Carney came out and said there's room to lower the bank rate if necessary. Now, if you follow the pound at all, you'll know that uh, just several months ago, uh, Carney had said that the next move on interest rates will be to raise interest rates. And 
or to ra yeah to raise interest rates. That'll that'll be the next move on interest rates. They kind of a uh, assured the market. Yeah, next next thing we do if we do anything is going to be to to raise interest rates. For him to come out and kind of make a 180 on that and say, you know what, if this Brexit scenario, if we face a, he, he also, uh, they, they spoke of um, that a Brexit scenario could lead to a big depreciation in the sterling, the pound, if you will. And so there was a huge amount of dovishness. And you could see it when that came out that, you know, it came up a little bit because there were some inflationary number. You know, he was kind of a, a little bit more hawkish when it came to inflation in the inflation report, but you know the Brexit scenarios was was overly dovish. It came up and then it came all the way back down, and that's a pretty strong selling candle right down in there. And then it, it surprisingly enough, over the next two hours after that announcement, the pound actually appreciated. That was based more on the dollar. Uh, the dollar was selling off uh, pretty handily uh, yesterday, so the dollar selling off, I think, is what kind of more led to the pound strengthening here than it was. Um, the pound getting stronger, I think it was more the dollar getting weaker. And then, you know, after it had kind of appreciated by almost uh, almost 100 pips, it came down and started floating down here below the 4,500 level. In fact, I probably should have taken that. It made a 78.6% retracement, closed off of it, and then it's it's been on a downward slide ever since. Today, I think this does still have some room to go because we got kind of a double whammy. If we're looking from a fundamental standpoint, um, I'm hoping this trend can match up with the fundamentals because we also had the U.S. retail sales and the PPI come out this morning. Really good numbers coming out of the U.S. this morning when it comes to our retail sales and our PPI. Um, the actual retail sales, 1.3% versus a negative 0.3%, which was expected. That's a big number there. And then the core retail sales, excluding automobiles, was 0.8 versus 0.6 expectations, and they actually uh, they actually um, uh, adjusted the previous number to 0.4% uh, from, let's see, I think it was 0.2, yeah, 0.2% the previous month. So these were actually some really good numbers coming out of the U.S. The PPI, um, you know, some people might look at this and say, well, these are actually more mixed numbers, Steve, because the PPI came out at 0.2 and the expectation was 0.3. Eh. You know what? You know the PPI when it comes to inflation, um, anything that's positive would be considered to be a good number. It just didn't come out in line with expectation. It didn't come out in line with expectations, but it was still, I think, uh, an overly a good number. So I mean, these are some pr really good numbers coming out of the U.S. here, and you know that's, these are the type of numbers that you know with the more the dovish tone coming out of the pound, the Brexit scenario coming up which the Brexit scenario is one to where, you know, just, you know, the thought of having a Brexit, it would, you know, it's probably going to weigh down the pound a little bit. You know, a lot of it as we head into June, I think it's June 23rd. Um, so that Brexit scenario is going to weigh heavily on the pound as we go forward. It's going to be really hard for the pound to make any type of appreciation. Um, now, that's not to say that the pound can't go up. You know, if the dollar sells off out like it did yesterday, uh, then you can certainly see the pound move to the, uh, you know, to the upside, which it looks like it's actually doing right now, which would be par for course here on Friday the 13th. Uh, anyway, so looking at everything overall, markets are slightly down today. Dow futures are down 50. NASDAQ's down 6. Oil's down about 1%. I've only had one winning trade this week out of like four. Um, that was on dollar cad, and it didn't even reach my full max profit. I've been stopped out three times. Well, actually stopped out four times. Um, Nikkei down 234. It was down 1%. That was a big downward move on the Nikkei. So you can see all the Asian markets were down, and the European markets are actually a little mixed. Uh, you do have the DAX is up 40 Uh FTSE is down 21 or 0.34 percent, so not a huge amount of movement in the European markets. So, you know, everything considered, you know, the dollar has been, well, I should say has been, um, up until like the last 30 seconds, has been very strong across the board. When you look at it versus the euro, you know, you had a nice little appreciation of dollar on the versus the euro. 
Not sure what's going on here. I always hate that sound. Let me mute my speakers. There we go. Uh, so dollars made some, you know, some pretty big movement against euro. You can see dollar strength. It's made some appreciation versus the Swiss. Um, made some after that kind of sell-off during the Asian session. Uh, it's made some appreciation versus the the yen. Commodity currencies have been given up, um, given way, you know, just in the last several 24 hours or so to dollar, um, dollar strength, dollar stronger versus the CAD, stronger versus Aussie, slightly stronger versus New Zealand. So, you know, here on this last day of the, you know, on this Friday, you know, the one that, the one that, I, that, you know, even though the dollars made some moves versus all these currencies, the one that I would kind of bank on as far as uh, the potential for it to, um, to to sustain a more volatile move uh, would be there on that pound dollar. That's that's the one that I think that could could actually have a little bit more volatility, just because of all the situations happening with the pound. I mean, um, it seems like there's been a lot of selling pressure around it. <clears throat> So strategy for today, this is kind of my my line in the sand trade. back up in here so I can at least get this thing rolling see it kind of spiked up a little bit here and it's been making steady lower lows on the on the on the trend indicator on the pipu trend line so everything right now is matching up on it good morning so besides this one you know if you followed along with the trades this week you know they've been less than stellar so what I will be doing is I'll certainly be continuously, you know, if this consolidates down here near the bottom, I will continuously, you know, move my stop down to be, you know, I'm going to use a three bar reversal right from the get go throughout the day. And no matter what, I'll probably be, uh, I will close this out at the end of the day by 5 p.m. But, you know, that's essentially what we're banking on. We're banking on, you know, out of all these, the pound having the most room for some volatility uh, to get to the downside there. You know, all in all, you know, looking at some of these other pairs, you know, there were other choices, if you will, but, you know, with with the news coming out today, I think that, you know, your best bet today is probably to, to just, um, you know, stay on the side of dollar strength. These currencies have had a mind of their own this week. They you know the correlations there hasn't been a lot of correlations you know in the market this week as far as risk on risk off everything's been kind of going off on its own you know one interesting thing is that the euro dollar came down here right near this 113 level started to find some support you know this was another scenario to where you know I was thinking in my head on the pound you know maybe not looked so much for you know, look for a little bit more confirmation on that pound trade to go short. I went ahead and sold it, you know, right at the beginning of the hour. But, you know, this is another one where you could have used a little bit more confirmation if I was looking for dollar strength, is looking for the possibility of this euro dollar breaking down lower below this 113 level. Not only would a Brexit scenario be uh, detrimental to the sterling, but you can, you can assume that a Brexit scenario would also um, be, you know, you know, bring the, the euro down 
you know, as we get closer and with any type of probability that there might be a Brexit scenario, you would expect the European currencies to sell off. Um, there, there's just a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of negative connotations that come along with uh, the possibility of, uh, from a currency standpoint, of the possibility of the the pound leaving the eurozone. And so other than that, um, you know, the other one that I was looking at here, I still, you can see how this yen came up in here. I'm giving you, I can give you a couple of ideas that I had as far as other trades that I was looking for before this pound trade. Uh, but I'm not going to put them on the trading sheet just because I'm already short the pound dollar. I think that's the one that probably has the highest probability of, of perhaps uh, making a move, a stronger move up. Early this morning, I, I had woken up and I had seen the, the dollar yen had made this nice little ABC correction down here towards a lower range of 118. And then yeah, I, didn't, I never took it, never came down to 78.6. But I was also looking at the fact that the yen looked like it was going to make a strong close above this 119 level and above this resistance level. Um, you know, this is another one to where, just like the pound, when you look at this kind of longer term, that breaking up through this, you can see the support back in here, and that's the new resistance level right in through here, right above that 109 level. It may not happen today, but by the way, the uh, Hirohiko Kuroda and the Bank of Japan, I guess there is other news. They've kind of made a 180 on their whole monetary easing policy, saying that they could continue with further easing, uh, you know, in... Um, you know, possibly even going into next month as far as continue on with their, their monetary easing program. Um, that was one of the big things that brought the yen down a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I should say. Actually, it was a couple of weeks ago, was the shock from the Bank of Japan when they, you know, just left everything unchanged. They've, uh, they've uh, certainly shifted their, their minds a little bit on that to where, if it does break above this resistance level, you know, there's a whole lot of room to go here on the yen. You know, it could, it could, uh, quite frankly, it could, it could make a, a larger move to the upside. Maybe not in one day like today, but it certainly has a lot of room to go. That was another one that I was considering was, you know, here on the dollar yen. But as it stands right now, you know, this is one, you know, after kind of going over everything, this is the one that I thought just had the better you know, when things have already kind of made them moves in the market, you have to go with the one that, you know, you go with the currency that you think has the highest probability of moving outside of its normal range. And I told students yesterday that if this thing came down below that 4,400 level, that there was a good chance the pound could, could, uh, could accelerate and make a further move to the downside. which we shall see still still this this is yet this this book is yet to be written here so we'll we'll see so that's that's it as far as trades today this is a quick class cuz i i really um we we said it we've said it all the time when we're in class we always say when you've had a bad trading week you never want to make it into a horrible trading week um this, if this were to be stopped out for a max loss, I wouldn't say it would be a horrible trading week, but it would certainly be add to the badness. Uh, it would certainly not be a not be anywhere st near stellar. But yeah, weeks like this happen sometimes, and well, a lot of times in the market. You know, nobody's uh, you're going to suffer drawdowns. It's just a fact of life. But. You never want them. You never really want it to happen, though. You just want it to, you know, you would like to be profitable in each and every trade. But if any of you know how to do that, please let me know. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and keep things there. You know, the markets, you know, it depends on some under, you know, we could have some underlying volatility in the markets this morning. But overall, I think that. 
this pound probably is our best bet as far as looking for for further momentum All right. Let me just get some stuff saved in here. And there's your handout for the day. Not much more I can add here other than to say good luck if you're short on this trade. If not, if you've suffered the same uh, wounds that I have this week, nothing wrong with closing the door on your business and starting fresh on Monday. It's one good thing about trading is that, you know, there's always tomorrow. So there's always Monday in this case. So that's where I'm going to leave things here, folks. Have a fantastic weekend. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And I will chat at everyone bright and early on Monday morning. So thanks for coming in, everyone. Bye-bye.